Professor Diaz here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about tastes and preferences, uh, determinant of demand. And again, what is a determinant of demand? A determinant of demand is something that shifts the entire demand curve. So we may see this entire demand curve shift out like this, or we may see this entire demand curve shift in like this. Um, this is in contrasting and comparing to a, a change in quantity demanded. So remember, if price goes from this point and falls, say, to this point, then if price falls, we move along the same curve. The curve doesn't shift. And then we have a shift in quantity demanded from here to here. Okay, so there's a difference, a huge difference between a change in demand, which is the overall desire and change of all the aggregate demand of all people wanting to buy at all prices, and a change in price, right? The example I like to use is that, you know, if, if you go to a taco truck, you have a certain demand for tacos, a, a, a different, you'll buy different amounts of tacos depending on the price of those tacos. If if for some reason um, you're just really in the mood for tacos, your demand for tacos goes up, or if you're really hungry, your demand for tacos goes up, you'll buy more tacos at no matter what the price. But if you just find out there's a lower price, your, your overall demand for tacos doesn't go up, you'll just buy a larger quantity of tacos um, because of it, okay? So the first of the determinants of the demand, which is the something that will actually change the demand curve, it'll actually shift it, is here, tastes and preferences, okay? Tastes and preferences is the first and primary determinant of demand, right? Let's say this is the demand curve for uh, kale, right? Um, a notoriously disgusting food that hardly anybody likes, right? The demand for kale is gonna be low. Then everybody decides kale is a superfood and you wanna, you know, eating it will make you live forever. Um, what's gonna happen to people's tastes and preferences for, for kale? right? Well, it's going to shift that whole curve out. If people want kale more, it doesn't matter what price it is. At every price, people will be willing to pay more for kale. Um, conversely, you know, there's a certain demand for, say, beef. Um, everybody wants, you know, a certain amount of beef and they'll pay different prices for beef at, you know, different, di they'll buy different quantities of beef at different prices. But uh, when I was a kid, there was a mad cow breakout in a, in a city near me. And this made everybody really adverse to beef. So what happens, just the thought of eating beef when there's mad cow disease and it's local, kind of grossed you out, right? So what would happen in that case? Uh, that would decrease the demand, right? That would decrease the demand so the whole curve would shift in. Um, this is the same, you know, certain fads. Uh, maybe there's a branding brand of clothing that's not popular, but then some famous person tweets it. Then everybody wants it. That's going to increase people's tastes and preferences and shift that curve out. Um, you know, any, any time that people's tastes or preferences change towards a good or service, it's going to increase or decrease the demand. It's the first, um, you know, and most basic shifting of demand. If people's overall desire, demand, taste, preferences towards a product or service change, that will change the demand. And that doesn't, I'm not saying again, that'll change the demand. It doesn't change the quantity demanded. Quantity demanded sort of moves along the line. It changes the demand. Okay, so we will continue on with uh, income as a determinant of demand in the next video.